Jay Bills for me to Spotlight UK, and I'm here with the Rumford Ball, Bosch Army in the building, Johnny Fisher. How are you doing? Like, obviously, we've just seen your open workout. Like, how confident are you feeling? How good do you feel that you've done your open workout? You've got a lot of people that are supporting you today. Yeah, it feels good. It's great to have uh, a few friends and family here supporting, seeing the media guys as well. It's great to have uh, all of you here, and I, I feel privileged to be in a position where I'm only fighting for an area title, mm. but people are here coming to support me. And I'm not taking as lightly one step because this is all just building me a little bit more, builds that little bit of nerves, that little bit of pressure, but I love the pressure because it makes me perform better. I guess you thrive off the pressure as well, especially like in different situations like within the boxing world. Yeah, not just boxing as well. I remember even at school when I knew I had a hard test or I had to do this, I thought, oh, I've got to revise a little bit more. I'm, I'm that sort of character where yeah. I have to try and, if anything, I've got to try and bring it down a little bit and yeah. not try and, uh, yeah, I've got to try and just stay a bit calm and stay relaxed. But I've always seen, even when I'm sparring or if I'm, if I'm fighting someone or sparring someone a bit better, I, I tend to up the level a little bit, you know? How does it feel like to actually be on this undercard? Like when you hear it, like you're, you're facing Harry Armstrong, you know, you've got the banner behind you, Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White. When you hear all that together and you're part of the conversation, how does that honestly make you feel? It feels great, but I sort of block it out a little bit. I just like, yeah, just got to keep going. It's another fight, it's 10 rounds yet. Can train for that. I've inspired 10 rounds off the bat, inspiring. It's just another fight at the end of the day, and then I'll, I'll worry about all the uh, commotion of it afterwards as well. Yeah, yeah but it, so, you're, so you're always like focus in, yeah. like you're not worried about like all the glitz and glamour that goes behind it. We always have a joke in the in the ring, like I've got to fight a man, he's going to try and punch me in the face, I'm going to try and punch him in the face. I've just got to punch him a bit harder and a bit many, a few more times. That's all it is. That's it. So it's all about who can punch harder and who can get the who can get the W basically. Yeah, who can hit him with more punches. That's all it is. And of course, obviously your career, like you know, you've had all of them pretty much TKOs. Um, you know, early rounds that you've able to to dominate obviously obviously your last fight uh, with Emilio Salas uh, Southpaw you know expecting to go the distance but you know you defeated him in dominant fashion yeah. like firstly did you expect that that was the way it was going to go no, I was expecting well me and Eddie had a conversation in the change room before like it's going to be tricky this guy good amateur background golden gloves champ and I think he just felt I just threw a little check hook and I knew that was it was like 30 seconds or a minute in and it wobbled him a little bit and he tried to grab me and I thought yeah this guy can't really take the power mm. But in a way, yeah, it's great to get him out in the first round. But after all that training and like you've been sparring southpaws and you've been expecting a little bit, a few southpaw rounds in a fight. And yeah, it's great to get the win and you're always never going to begrudge that. But yeah, it would have been nice to have a few rounds. But I say that and then I'll fight someone and it'll go 10 rounds or 12 rounds or the full distance and you'll wish it only went one round. So yeah, I'm not, mo I'm not moaning that you got him out of there quick. Did you feel it was like anticlimactic the way it, way it felt in, after your fight that you wanted to go a little bit more in rounds? Well, even I just wanted to get up so I could blast him a little bit, you know, yeah. before he, he sort of like Put stayed down. Yeah, yeah, just like show a nice little clean finish. But you do all that work and all that pressure, you're feeding in the change room and yeah, it's all over. But I'm not moaning because I've got another win. I got to go to Mallorca afterwards, have a, have a little relax, and yeah, straight yeah. into an area title fight. So, bosh, bosh. I mean, look. Firstly, before, before we get into anything, like you, you are you are a lover of Chinese. Uh, you know, you always uh, it's always tradition after your fights that you go for a bit of Chinese. I wanted to ask you actually because I know you travelled uh, to different places all over the world. Yeah. What would you consider to have the be best country or the best city to have their Chinese? Well, I had an unbelievable one. My favourite is obviously Blue Orchid in Romford because that's my staple. That's what I've been growing up with. But we went to actually Liverpool, one called Mei Mei, and my dad was eating Chinese with my mum and my sister the night before the fight, and I was watching them eat it, and the smell was unbelievable. I bet the aromas were just credible. There was a little bit of uh, sizzling beef there, and I could eat that because it's obviously just a little bit of beef. Sure. And it was just melting in my mouth. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, I want to try the salt and chili squid. I want to try the sweet and sour chicken on Kong style. I want to try the chicken balls, but I can't eat any of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I need to go back to Liverpool. I need to go to Mei Mei and have a, have a nice Chinese. Before we talk about your opponent with uh, Harry Armstrong, yeah. um, of course, obviously, like I've, I've seen a lot of your videos. My brother wanted to ask you this. Like, who is the narrator with a lot of your videos? Because they're entertaining. There he is. He's over there. See him? Henry, he does, my, he does work for, uh, he works for me and he does work for El Brook as well. He does um, yeah. part of their management side of it. So yeah, he's the one who's who does the boss soldier videos. So yeah, he's the he's the talent behind all of it, and he's the one who started filming Big John, and he's the one who started getting all the content out of there. So yeah, he's the brains behind it all. So talking about your opponent Harry Armstrong, obviously you know this this will be like your tenth fight uh, in your in your career. Do you expect him to be the toughest yeah. fight of your career so far? Because I know that you sparred with him before. Like, what do you expect when you see from him? He'll be the toughest fight of my career. But I think I think that about every fight I go into, every fight, the next fight is always the toughest. If you don't prepare for that, then you won't win. Listen, I'm going to give it 110%. I sparred him before. Really tough guy. Good fast hands. But I think I've got the physicality, the, uh, the raw aggression. I've got the freshness, the speed. 
I think I've, I've got I've got what it takes. So mm -hmm. that's all I can that's all I can do. Give it 110, yeah. percent and I think I'll have too much. And um, who do you see winning in terms of? Obviously, we know you're the true main event, but obviously the main event in terms of <laughs> in terms of the people's main event. But if we're talking about Anthony Joshua versus Dylan White, obviously they've got their rematch. Like, how do you see that one going? Obviously, you've seen their past history because you actually started uh, getting into boxing when you f saw well, the first fight, right? Boxed when I was young, right, from six or seven to about 14, 15. I broke my hand playing rugby. Mm. And it, I didn't start again until I was 19, but I've always been a massive boxing fan. And I remember finishing my GCSE, starting my A-levels, I was watching Joshua White. And I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of both. I look up to both of them. And now to be on their undercard is, is brilliant. Listen, I, I hope Joshua can win because when Joshua does well, the whole of British boxing does well. He's a great yeah. advert for the sport, a great role model. And yeah, I remember being at university and boxing just growing as a thing. And partly of that, because of that, is because of him fighting Ruiz, Povetkin, and he fought Klitschko, obviously. And... Yeah, it, it was great for, for, for boxing when he does well, so hopefully he can get the win. But it's not going to be easy against White. No, it definitely won't be easy. I've got to talk about your friend Elbrook. Um, yeah. Obviously, she's had a fight against Julie Poker, yeah. uh, her first loss, uh, but she, you know, it was a really, really great fight. Like, she put on yeah, a she, dominant performance. Um, not, I wouldn't say dominant performance, but they both like were great in the she's ring. Great. Um, so, I mean, obviously, you know, she's now, you know, reflected upon it. But, like, when you saw that fight, like, how did you see that going? And, you know, the relationship you guys had, uh, have as being friends and stuff. Like, what have you taught her along the way? Being a pro boxer yourself, like, you know, what's the main things that you've taught Elle along the way? Well, she's been in, in the gym for a long time now, for about a year. So, yeah, a long time in a sense. But she's only been boxing for a year. So it ain't a long time in that sense. But she's been around us. She trains as hard as anyone. She works alongside me, Joel Bartell, everyone else in the gym and you can't fault her commitment, her dedication. And yeah, sometimes you just come up short. Mm. And she's fighting in a weight class, probably four or five of uh, Yeah, higher, yeah. And um, she's so good. When I see her spa, the, the improvement she's made from when she first come in here, she will no doubt come back. And you've got to remember the influence of the boxing scene is very different to the professional boxing scene. We have to separate professional boxing sure. from influencer entertainment boxing. Yeah. And it's a pure entertainment business, that mm. side of it. And having a loss in that is not a problem. Mm. They're interested in the personalities and the people behind it. Mm. And they always got the ability to rule that, rule that uh, influence of boxing. So fair play to her. She'll have a nice break and then she'll be back. Do you, do you reckon the next fight that should be logical in a sense is uh, her versus Astrid? Yeah, that's a great fight. Because one, I think Elle will batter her because she's just too good. Mm. And two, it's, it's that old rivalry that can stoke that, stoke that up a bit because they, they're not the best of friends. Mm. And that's what, um, that's what uh, influence of boxing is all about, mm. entertainment. And of course, obviously, you, you're fighting for the Southern Area Championship. Yep. Um, you know, afterwards, do you see yourself like, you know, going towards like the British and European Championships as like a progression going forward of that? Or before you get to like the big names? Or like, what, what, what do you aim to do after your fight should you win this uh, in your fight there Saturday? I haven't even thought about it. I have not even thought about what I'm doing after. All I'm thinking about is Harry Armstrong. And that is how I've gone through my whole career. The next fight is all that matters. That's how I've gone through my whole life, really. Mm. If I was playing rugby, that's the only match that matters. If I've got an exam, that's the only one that matters. Just got to keep going like that. And it's not done me bad so far, so I just got to keep thinking like that. And I know, obviously, you being a pro boxer, like, obviously, you talked about the influence of boxing side of things. Um, you know, obviously, what's been talked about is that Misfits are looking to do a pro tournament. Yeah. Um, is that something that uh, intrigues you in terms of that? Obviously, there's a pro division in that, yeah. or is it something that you're just going straight into pro and not thinking about influence boxing? Well, I'm a matron man through and through, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm sticking to my guns. But um, yeah, it's interesting how it's all developing. But yeah, I've got, I've got uh, fish to fry of my own at the minute. So yeah, that's not something that's on my agenda right now. And obviously with KSI versus Tommy Fury pretty much looking like it's confirmed. Yeah. Um, you know, where do you see that going? And, you know, because obviously it's hyped up to be a, a massive fight. Uh, what, Fury? Um, Fury and KSI. Yes, yeah, so I've seen that. I've seen a few posters about that. Uh, I think Fury will beat him. I like Tommy Fury. I've met him a couple of times. I know Tyson quite well. And, um, yeah, it's, it's great. that uh, it's, it's getting more people interested in, in boxing. Yeah, we've got to still protect professional boxing and that side of it. But, yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested to see how that goes. And it will be a great event for... British entertainment in general. Final thing from me, obviously, like your dad, John, is a massive influence on your career. Yeah. Um, what has been like sort of the key things that he's, you know, pushed, pushed upon you to be the pro boxer that you are today? Just, uh, it, just, just keep your feet on the ground. Don't, when things go well, don't go too, too high. When things are bad, don't think too low. It's just another day. Keep your feet on the ground, keep training hard and good things will happen. And yeah, that's, that's our mentality. We're just normal people. Keep working hard and 
you try hard at things, good things happen. That's and, and should you win uh, for your fight against Harry, what will be your Chinese celebration? What are you looking at salt in terms of meal? Salt and chili king prawn, house special fried rice, egg fried rice, uh, spicy Szechuan pork, sizzling chili beef, uh, beef Cantonese style, spicy pork, sesame prawns, kelp, <laughs> pancake rolls, spring rolls. Oh, don't forget the chicken balls, prawn balls, and pork balls, and the uh, egg foo young. But, Wow, damn, damn. So if you want to, <laughs> that, that's making me hungry. Like, I don't know if I can even do them portions. I can have lamb chops though. I can have lamb chops today because, yeah, yeah I can't eat any of that, but I can have lamb chops. <laughs> well, I appreciate your time being here and the speak to me. If there's something you want to tell your fans, I'm going to give you the mic. And then if there's something you want to tell your fans, um, let them know right here. Everyone, thank you very much for supporting me so far. I'm going to keep trying my best. We've had a great turnout today with some of the boss soldiers. 12th of August, rise of the boss soldier. Be there or be square. Bosh. Bosh, you know the deal.